Yo, what's going on guys? Christy Flakes here. For today's video, we are going to be doing a Chris Paul traded Milwaukee Bucks rebuild. So it's a rumor going on right now. And I thought it was definitely an interesting scenario to look at. Now, before we start talking about it, if you can please do me a quick favor and drop a like on this video, guys. Your support really, really does help grow the channel. And uh, yeah, man, it really does mean a lot when you definitely do, uh, drop those likes, show that support out there. And as always, check out my second channel, Extra Crispy, for daily NBA content over here. Um, So yeah, I like saw this trade... And my first initial thought is, as a Piston fan who, about a decade ago, saw Chauncey Billups get traded from Allen Iverson, and that was literally like the downfall of the Detroit Pistons, I am a firm believer in, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. The Milwaukee Bucks are currently 18-3 and on the season. Now, looking at these two players, we'll do a little side-by-side -side player comparison here. Um... You know, like, like let's let's look, let's go ahead and look at Eric Bledsoe's stats because Eric Bledsoe to me is not like a bad basketball player. This year, averaging 15 points, five rebounds, six assists, one steal per game. Um, his defense, really, just in general, has been really good for this Milwaukee Bucks squad. Of course, the big knockoff on him is that his three point shot's not very good. Now, can he be a capable three point shooter? We're looking at years past. It's like, yeah, he can be around like 35 percent. This season was like 39 percent. Then early on was more of a 20 percent guy. But I mean. He definitely could be a three-point shooter. It's just, it's not quite working out. I would say that's probably, like, the biggest flaw of his game. And then, of course, you know, come playoff time, Eric Bledsoe is kind of notorious for not really playing up to par. Um, so I could see maybe if the Bucks were like, okay, like, we, we know we're a regular season team, but we're looking to get that next point guard to get us that next level. The issue I have with that is that Chris Paul also does not really have, like, a great playoff track record. So, I mean... Is it that much of an improvement? Chris Paul this year, he's playing a lot better than a lot of us thought he was going to. A lot of people had him kind of like washed up and stuff. But I mean, 16 points, 4 rebounds, 6 assists, 2 steals per game. Definitely being a nice leader for that OKC Thunder team. A team that's probably not going to make the playoffs. Uh, shooting 39% from 3, so you definitely get a nice improvement right there. Just like the big issue I have is it comes down to the contract situation. So, he still do... A ton of money. Let's just keep it at that, man. A ton of money till the age of 36. The Milwaukee Bucks would need to go over the luxury to actually keep Chris Paul in the long term of things. So you're paying a lot of salary right there. Um, for a guy that where it's like, do you really want him around on this contract for the next three seasons? Now, this year, it might be a minuscule improvement over Eric Bledsoe. But uh, even Eric Bledsoe's contract... Um, it's actually not too bad. It's, it's a longer-term contract. It's a four-year thing. So, yeah, you definitely have that to consider. But he's also a lot younger than Chris Paul is. Like, when his contract's up in 2022, he's only going to be 32 years old. So, the trade that I did, I might have already shown on the bottom there. It, it wasn't anything crazy. Like, I don't think it's like a trade that needs to be crazy. It was simply Eric Bledsoe and a second-round pick in exchange for Chris Paul. The reason I did that second-round pick is because if the Thunder really want to shop Chris Paul around. And I do think, you know, at the beginning of the year, there wasn't really a lot of suitors. Just because Chris Paul, nobody really know what to expect from him this year um i think there would definitely be more people on the market now but the thing is is that the thunder the reason they would need that draft pick back is because they're not really getting that straight up salary relief with chris paul i'm sorry with eric bledsoe him still being on like a four-year contract so i think that just sweetens the pot a little bit like yes you do save some money but not you know you're still like not getting like an expiring deal which they definitely could get if they want to go out there and seek that plus of course you got shea gillis out there at the point guard spot so you're probably looking at like an eric bledsoe shea backcourt for the next four years uh assuming uh, eric bledsoe would stay around for that long but yeah, so we are going to see how this team can like do because let's be honest, Eric Bledsoe is great, Chris Paul is great, but it comes down to this man right here, Giannis Antetokounmpo, 31 points, 13 rebounds, 6 assists on the NBA season, Chris Middleton, um, you know, before injury, playing pretty solid basketball, like looking right, like looking like he should probably be an All Star again this season. Uh, no big time complaints about him. Just you know what to ex expect from Chris Middleton. Of course, you're gonna have Chris Paul on the team now. Uh, Brick Lopez, who's definitely taking a step back this season. George Hill's been a nice backup point guard. Dante DiVincenzo's been nice. Wesley Matthews, a little bit of a disappointment. I think this team definitely would want to go out and maybe seek a better shooting guard if possible. Um, but when I do these type of rebuilds, my whole thing is, you know. I want to see how this team does after this trade. Because chances are they would not make like another big time trade. So uh, for this first season, it's not really going to be too much going on. We're going to kind of roll the punches here and kind of just like see how this team does with Chris Paul as the leader of it. So minute wise, yeah, Chris Paul, uh, I don't know how many minutes he's been averaging this season. I'll probably get him at a few more just because, you know, he wants to go all in. He's not getting any younger. So yeah, I'm going to go on with that. Uh, Giannis, I think, would need to play like, a ton of minutes. He already kind of is. So we're going to make like 39 a game. Brooke Lopez at 25. With, of course, Robin Lopez backing him up. Um, I'm good for this right here as far as, like, our 
uh, five-man rotation off the bench, although I do want to get Dante at a few more. He's actually been pretty impressive with me this year, man. What's he uh, averaging, though? I don't know his actual averages, but it seems like whenever I watch him play, he's playing some good basketball. So, yeah, nine points, four rebounds. Honestly, he could start over Wesley Matthews, and that might actually be a better route. I think I'm actually going to go with that, man. I think I'm going to go with Dante. He might actually even start um, some games. I'm not really sure. I don't watch every single Bucks basketball game. But, yeah, I'll give him like 25 minutes per game. So, that will be like a low-key switch up. Uh, as far as first scoring option, definitely has to be Giannis. Second, I'm going to say Chris Middleton. And then third being Chris Paul. With him just focusing on being a playmaker and setting everybody up for those nice shots. So, yes. Currently on a 12-game winning streak. Now, you're watching this before the Pistons games. You know, they're going to be able to lose a streak after that. No, probably not. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. But I'm not too hopeful as a Piston fan. Uh, so, yeah. Let's go ahead and simulate this NBA season and see just how good Chris Paul is. And the Milwaukee Bucks can be. Okay, so we are at the end of the regular season. I decided to chill down this corner now just because, like, I, I recorded my computer now. So, I use this program by, like, NVIDIA. And there's this size webcam or there's another one where it's, like, freaking half the screen. So, I like the smaller one a bit more here. And just angles just kind of looks better. Uh, so, yeah, we got one more game against the uh, Brooklyn Nets. Simulate their date and finish with an L on the season. Giannis, we had MVP. You can't see the points, but it's 29 points. 13 rebounds, 7 assists, about 1.6 steals and 1 point blocks per game. John Morant at 22 points, 4 rebounds, 7 assists. Dennis Schroeder at 19 points per game. So, yeah, he's beasting. Um, I wonder if he would get more playing time, you know, with Eric Bledsoe on the team. Probably not. And then Kawhi Leonard, Defensive Player of the Year. Malcolm Brogdon, most improved. I know them Buck fans got to miss that guy. You got to miss him. And then we got Mike Budweiser out there as Coach of the Year, of course. Uh, then we got All-NBA first team with Giannis, of course, making that All-NBA second and All-NBA third. So, no Chris Paul. Sometimes he actually does make it in these videos. But, uh, yeah, Eric Bledsoe, all-defensive team. So, he's very underrated defender, if you ask me. Um, people look at, like, the three-point shooting stats, and they're just like, man, Eric Bledsoe is no good with Giannis. But it's like he does so many other good things out there. That's why I'm just like, this trade is it's whatever. But regardless, we are the first seed, and the OKC Thunder actually made it to the playoffs himself. Uh, let's go to the player stats on the season and see exactly how Chris Paul did. So a nice 17 points, 4 rebounds, 8 assists. Uh, we trade him today, which is December. So let's actually go to the split stats right here. And we can see how he did since uh, he was actually traded. So since like the December time, so around like January, around like, you know, 17, 18, 19 points per game. Pretty much roughly the same stats. Now the assists, like look at February. Assists going up to about 10 per game. 8 assists in January still. So the defense still looking great. Uh, shooting wise still very very efficient he was actually playing really good fall in like february yeah three-point shot actually even got even better out there playing off Giannis. so i guess that's the difference between playing with Giannis or playing with like danilio gallinari who's fine but he's not gonna warrant as many double teams as a Giannis would uh brick lopez nine points george hill did fine Ursan, Wesley, and then I give Dante the damn start out there. Now Wesley Matthew wants to play better, so I'm kind of dumbfounded on who to actually play long term. Uh, we'll see, man. We, that might be a position to look to upgrade as we go on with this rebuild. But here we go. First round, we do have the Orlando Magic. I think we could definitely get past the Magic. Is it going to be a sweep? I'll see Vucevic is good for one game. There we go. Damn, two games. DJ Augustine, of course, probably got one of those. Uh, Mark full 21 points in the closeout. 28-12-3 for Giannis. 17-5-7 and seven for Chris Paul. And 14 and 9 for George Hill, which I love having George Hill on this team just because, like, you know, if Chris Paul does have like a slower game, you have such a good backup point guard to kind of like, slow things down and bring it back to center. Next up, Boston Celtics simulate round here, see how this goes. And uh, damn, I was not expecting the sweep of the Celtics, but 2K doesn't like the Celtics. So, yo, look at this stat line 25, 12, 15, 3, 3, and 2 turnovers, which ain't bad. Even knocked down his threes now. Cover playing like damn Philly Cover right there. And uh, Chris Paul, you know, 9 points, 2 rebounds, but I love the 10 assists. You know, sometimes it's just about kicking it back. You become the playmaker, let George Hill do some scoring, it's all good. And then Chris Milton played great too. Okay, next up we got the Brooklyn Nets. I don't think Kevin Durant is healthy yet, but uh, we'll see. Yeah, he's not healthy at all. I mean, he's supposed to be out, but just some, you know, it's 2K. Simulate round, and got them 4 games to 1. This Bucks team is in the NBA Finals. Chris Paul, 18-4-7. So, yeah, maybe a switch up is warranted. Now, I still think the Bucs can get to the finals with Eric Bledsoe. It's just, you know, you never, I don't know, man. Here we go. Okay, simulate round. I'm not going to look. Did we win? Did we beat Kawhi Leonard and Paul George? Probably not. Hey, there we go, guys. Milwaukee Bucks, your NBA champions. And just the first season, right? I didn't even love the rebuild out there. I just did the trade, right? That's why I didn't really want to touch it all too much. Uh, 23 points, 10 rebounds, 5 assists, 2 steals, 2 blocks. I definitely think uh, Giannis deserves that finals MVP. 
It was a seven game series. Oh my. Yo, look at Giannis in that closeout. 37, 17, and 9. Three steals, three blocks, doing it all. Chris Paul, huge game. Near triple double, 19, 6, and 12. You could just tell Chris Paul would want to win. And then a uh, very bad shooting night for Chris Milton, but still managing to get to that. Well, didn't even really get to the free throw line. Knocked down his threes. I guess if you're going to go four for 20, at least the four shots is three pointers. But uh, yeah, not absolutely amazing. All right. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm going to do another season just because, you know, it's not a rebuild unless you do more than one season. Uh, I guess we'll see if we can go back to back, make this team a dynasty, keep uh, Giannis around, because you want to keep him happy next year too, because, uh, you know, there's small talks out there of Giannis going to the Warriors, or maybe Giannis is going to go to the New York Knicks. He ain't going to the damn Knicks. I'm sorry. We already did that shit with Kevin Durant, and Kyrie, and even Zion. He ain't going there, man. All right, staff signing. Let's see if we can get Budweiser up in here. Uh, yep, we got him for three more years. Wow, that's crazy. He's got a D-plus offense, and the team still played that great. It almost makes me want to fire him just to see how much better this team could be with, like, a better off offensive coach. And, you know, we did we, we did win a championship. No. Ugh, I can't do I can't fire the coach of the year. I ain't the Toronto Raptors. I'm not the Toronto Raptors. Okay, NBA draft. Um, Probably going to be a best available situation, although I'm pretty sure they have the Indiana Pacers draft pick. I think I did see that, so that would be nice. Uh, so we might actually get a decent enough rotational piece. What pick is it? Damn, 13th pick in the draft. Hell yeah, we're going to get a nice piece there. Let me go to the trade finder. And, uh, you know, I would offer up like... Uh, I do like Dante Love. I don't really want to get rid of him. I don't know, like... George Hill was nice. He might have some good trade value. He's 34 now, so I mean... We might want to get younger at the point guard spot. Like him with the first round pick, we might be able to get us a quality starting shooting guard. Here you got Jordan Clarkson, Dylan uh, Windler. That's not bad. Romeo Langford, uh, Brandon Clark. Wow, that's actually a really good trade. James Wiseman? Okay, I'm sorry, guys. That is a fantastic trade, but there is no way I could finesse the Atlanta Hawks like that. I can't do it. Uh, Charlotte Hornets, Miles Bridges, Malik Monk. That's actually some two nice pieces. Okay, okay. Belitsa, Seku, OG Anobi. That's not bad. I actually kind of like that. Maybe the Raptors are looking to rebuild a little bit. Get a nice veteran with George Hill also. You also get that Matt Thomas guy, Derek White. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah, this trade, because we're giving up the 13th pick of getting OG, um, I don't feel like as bad. You know, like, it's... Ne ne you know, no, no trades are ever completely one side, or, or, or ever completely equal. That trade I was fine with, because now I'm probably going to put Curse Milton back at the two spot. And, uh, yeah, that should be nice for our rotation. There we go. Okay, so rookie signings. We end up getting uh, Aaron Wiggins. I'm not going to use him at all, so I'm going to let him walk. Uh, team player options. Weston Matthews declined. That's fine. Robin Lopez back in 5 million. Good backup center. I'm good with that. Dragon Bender. Hell no, baby. Hell no, man. Not in a million, trillion, billion years will I ever give you another contract. Sterling Brown. Don't really need him. I'll let him walk. I'm sure he's a nice player, but give him opportunities elsewhere. Okay. So definitely need a backup point guard now. Um, not really. Because that's the thing. Is this team's like over like the luxury. So you're not really going to find anybody too great. Uh, I think for now, I would go for like a Trey Burke. And I would be okay with him. Now, I am probably going to look for a better backup point guard via trade, so we'll do all that. But, yeah, we don't have any money really to work with right here, man. So, let me make sure we're good as far as, like, our uh, bird rights. Because any players we can get back on the nice... Yeah, Pat uh, Connaughton, I believe is how you say his name. Definitely get him back on the team. Um, as some sort of option. Maybe even a trade piece. But, yeah, I'm going to go ahead, guys. Simulate two at the beginning of the regular season. Do all my training camps. And probably look to get, like, a decent... Like, not like I, I don't want like an old ass backup point guard, so I'm gonna try to get somebody that's pretty decent, hopefully on a good contract, maybe. Okay, so here is the team as of right now. I'm not gonna lie, guys, I'm actually a little intrigued by the idea of maybe getting like a better big guy in exchange for Chris Middleton and then going with like Dante and OG as our two and three, or maybe even find like a better player with Chris Middleton because we got like a lot of depth on this team, so it's definitely a possibility. I guess we don't got that much depth. Damn, they actually are betting actually a little on the weak side. I didn't notice that. Okay. Uh, but I'm still kind of curious. So let's go to Trade Finder. And yeah, trade to Chris Middleton. Because he's got a very large contract. So at least we could possibly get some salary relief out of it. Uh, Brooke Lopez, I don't really want to trade him up. I think I'll probably toss him Pat here. Uh, and a future first round pick if we got one to trade. Yes, we do. And just see what he gets offered up. You never really know. Uh, and then that way, hopefully, Brooke Lopez can be off the bench. Or in this case, we get Tobias Harris. See, that trade doesn't really make much sense. Although, Matisse Thibault would be really nice to have. Okay, but yeah, both is still a really expensive contract to Tobias. We got Kobe White. Don't need him. Kevin Love, Colin Sexton. 
that's actually not a bad trade. That's actually not a bad trade. Because Giannis would go to the three, of course. Then we get OG off the bench. Colin Sexton, I would probably use off the bench too. And that really strengthens that up. I actually really like that trade idea there. Wow. And uh, yeah, contract-wise, I mean, they both got three years left. But you get Colin Sexton, who's a nice young player. So, Gordon Hayward, Marcus Smart. You're definitely going to get some good offers here, man. I was not expecting offers this good. Nikola Vucevic and Aaron Gordon. Ooh. That's intriguing. That is intriguing. You get, like, the nice center out of it. Um, and then Aaron Gordon, like, that's not, like, a bad player to have. Like, it would be a, maybe a little cringy having him in the lineup, but I might be able to work it out. Because um, I would have to probably put him at the small forward spot. So, I don't know if I absolutely love that, but that's actually not bad. We could get Malcolm Brogdon back. Pascal Siakam, no, that's probably not going to happen. Andrew Wiggins, okay, okay. Clay Thompson. I mean, maybe the Golden State Warriors looking to go in a little bit of a di different direction there. Maybe Clay Thompson, you know, a little on the older side. They want more of a healthier player. And Chris Milton, although he has his own injury issues. Um, so, yeah, I really like the Clay Thompson deal. That would be a nice fit alongside Giannis. Uh, and then, like, oh, we would have just OG at the three spot. And you get Kevon Looney out of it. So, it's either that trade or it's the trade for Vucevic and Aaron Gordon. Damn. You know what? I think I'm going to try Clay Thompson out. I think I'm going to try out Clay Thompson. I'm going to go with that one. And then we just get like a nice different type of center in Kevon Looney. There we go. That sounds cool. Uh, and then we got OG as a small forward still. And we get to keep Giannis at that forward spot. We don't got to mess with him and Aaron Gordon. Uh, so yeah, Brooke Lopez will continue to start. We still got Dante. Don well, now actually Dante comes off the bench. Strengthens that up a bit. And I'm actually kind of good with like Trey Burke there. I would probably like to get like another like backup power forward if possible. So let's do a trade of Sterling. I don't think he, oh, no, he has a no trade clause. So that's not going to happen. Yeah, Ursan just a bit old. So, yeah, Matt, Matt Thomas, uh, Ursan Ilyasova. Let's go for like a 77 overall power forward. Not exactly looking for Michael Kidd Gilchrist, but he might be the best available. If that's the case, that's okay. We're calling Holmes. Uh, okay, this dude is a nice stretch big. So, he would just be like the new Ursan Ilyasova. We'll go with him. That sounds cool. It's like a 78 overall. Can play like two spots on the roster. All right, so that is going to be the new team here going into this, uh, probably this final season. I don't see myself doing another season. We never really know. Maybe we get close enough, I want to do another one. Uh, so, yeah, Clay Thompson. The idea of him playing with Giannis sounds absolutely amazing. Of course, you got Chris Paul. The defense of this backcourt should be great. I love OG. I think that's going to be a big-time pickup. So, yeah, this should definitely be really, uh really good season here, guys. Definitely looking forward to it. So, and then uh, Kevon Looney, what was exactly was he like last season? Because when I think of him, I think like rim protector, rebounder, you know, traditional type of center. And, uh, yeah, 7.6 rebounds, one assist, not bad, and nearly a steal and block per game. Yeah, this man must have shot one, like, half quarter and got lucky with it. I'm not really sure, but got about 22 minutes per game last year. Uh, so, we'll get roughly the same this year. Feeling good about it, man. I am going to have to go back to the, uh, yeah, we got sufficiency, four-star defensive system. Definitely going to keep that up. And, uh, yeah, first scoring option still has to be Giannis. I'm going to say second, obviously, Clay Thompson, third, Chris Paul. Let's get it, man. Let's go ahead and simulate this second NBA season. We definitely switched up the team. I know I literally said it in the last year, like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But, hey, it's, we already got our championship, man. We don't want to get that championship fatigue. So, let's see what happens. Okay, so a record of 60 and 21 still on top of the Eastern Conference here. I would probably say probably the first, you know, the best record, but we'll see. Uh, Giannis, 31 points, 14 rebounds, 7 assists, 2 steals, 2 blocks, gaining another MVP award. Anthony Edwards, rookie of the year, at about 18 points. Dennis Schroeder, Kawhi Leonard, defensive player. De'Aaron Fox, most improved. And Mike Budweiser, once again, coach of the year. Uh, All-NBA first team with, of course, Giannis. All-NBA second and All-NBA third. So, no uh, no Clay Thompson, but we don't know exactly what he's going to be like when he's back from his injury anyway. So, he might never make that again. We'll see, though. Uh, once again, we are the first seed in the Eastern Conference. So, let's go to these player stats, see how everybody did. Um, yeah, Giannis played great. Clay Thompson, man, 24 points. Three rebounds, three assists. Okay, so he was pretty much a scorer out there. But Chris Paul, look at him go, man. My God. Wow. Honestly, I was like, this is like his best season ever. This is like his best, well, not his best season ever because you got to go back to like these days when he played when he was a baller on the Pelicans. But damn, bro, 21 points, four rebounds, 10 assists, two steals, 41% from through at the age of 35. Like, you could not ask for much better than that from Chris Paul. Like, he's that, like that to me, those numbers, he's playing up to his contract. And I think that's all you want Chris Paul to do at that point. It's just, like, play up to his contract. Um, OG didn't really play as impressive as I thought he would. But uh, he didn't really take a lot of shots. He only took about five shots per game. So, that's not great. But 
his other numbers his rebounding assist defense looks like it was all on there too more just just like a role player type of guy to like play off of uh Giannis and Chris Paul and he did a good job with that so first round we got the Chicago Bulls simulate round looking good 3-0 4-0 easy let's just go ahead and just sweep everybody let's just make this a nice easy sweep and we got 32 <laughs> 22 4 sometimes I'm like damn bro like I know I'm playing a video game and these are video game numbers but he actually does this stuff in real life so yeah okay next up Miami Heat another team that Chris Paul could potentially go to I don't know if um Heat fans really want him though all that much we got them four games to two I was heard about LaMarcus and Marv which I already did rebound on that uh to the Heat I don't know <laughs> 46 16 and 8 and chris paul is just playing amazing alongside him. 25 and 13 oh my god man yo beliefs the two 18 and 6 he was a nice low-key pick him. i'm actually pretty proud of that trade uh next up philadelphia simulate round and that was a seven game series so a little more frightening there 46 12 and 5 with four blocks for uh Giannis. definitely trying to get back to the nba finals dunking all over joel Embiid. and uh here we go we now have the clippers and bucks this went seven games last time. I'm not going to close my eyes this time since we won a championship. Uh, here we go, man. Got him four games to two. Back-to-back -back champions. Giannis, finals MVP at 30. Am I seeing that? I am seeing that correctly, man. 39 points. 15 rebounds. Six assists. Two steals. Two blocks. The Greek freak. He has gone beyond freakish. He has gone, like, in a whole new different dimension of basketball player, man. Uh, but, no, this rebuild was a lot of fun. I know it wasn't, like, much of a rebuild because, uh, well, it, it kind of is. You know, if, if you're, like, like retooling the team, or re it's, it is definitely building it up in a different way by getting Chris Paul. So, yeah, I was just, I saw that trade. I was very intrigued by it. And uh, if 2K is in the indication, it shouldn't be, guys. Don't use 2K as your basis for NBA knowledge. Um, although sometimes, you know, it's easy. It, 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 it can be, like, I, I probably do that sometimes myself, but just kind of, like, talking in discussion. But, yeah, man, um, was a lot of fun to do. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Be sure to drop that like. Subscribe! If you're new to my channel, check out my second channel, Extra Crispy. Also, the uh, Bad Boys Podcast with Zach Lee, SDC. We get in there, man. I I've had some stuff going on. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of gotten put off a little bit. But we're hoping to record either today or tomorrow. And getting that out to you guys as soon as possible. All right, guys. Peace out.